Okay, so hello there, Stefanos. Thank you for joining me. Hi. <laughs> and Thank you for this. You're welcome. And we're a year after we finished the program together. Yeah, where I was supporting yes. you through your recovery. So I thought it was a good time now for you to be able to look back and hopefully give some of your learnings uh, to help other people who are going through uh, similar uh, recoveries. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Sure. So would you like to start, first of all, by uh, letting everyone know what, what was wrong with you, what symptoms did you have, what diagnoses um, were you given? Yes, I can tell you. Thank you. Since 2000, I was diagnosed after a huge muscular spasm on on the back and debilitating pain for weeks. I was diagnosed with a degenerated disc, a hernia in LS or uh, L L5 S1. Slightly, slightly uh, rotated to the left side. Mm -hmm. However, the pain was on the right side. Okay. But that was not mentioned at that moment. I had just finished my PhD in structural engineering and I was thinking everything Structurally, you know, I was trying to understand the, the mechanics, the yeah. dynamics. Uh, and that was good. It kind of helped in the beginning. But uh, this uh, condition was accompanied by huge, uh, by two crucial events in my life. It had to do with a health problem, a sudden health problem in my family, and in a, a sudden situation in my personal life. So... Uh, after some occurrences of pain, debilit pain, after uh, exaggerating emotional uh, expressions, like hysteric events, right? If I can right. use this term, without any actual uh, motion or uh, overloading my body, and just bringing out a huge spasm that would put me to the floor for weeks, I so started were... realizing that something was going on. Okay, so what you're saying there is that, um, rather than having a physical injury, some, you had a recurrence yes. where it was more, you recognized it to be a real emotional trigger. Yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. Okay. And my initial uh, phenomenal injury was accompanied by a really two really two, uh, situations in my life yes okay so but looking back you recognize that but mm -hmm. at the time you weren't aware that that was the cause or triggering the pain yes so did you when the at, back at that time I was thinking how okay and when uh, when the back pain came on um, did you have um, a physical incident at that time as well, or not? I did have a physical incident, but it was not something like uh, an extreme injury. I just uh, bent my back mm -hmm. for large period of, periods of time and due to, to do my work in the field. Yes. Actually. And at the, at the moment, it just, you know, caused this, Lumbago, I don't know if the term is correct, but this lumbago would come and go for a couple of months. Okay. A couple of days after this pain, this slight spasm, mm -hmm. it, it would decrease. But a couple of days after that, it would pop up. So right. it was like I, 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 I fell from a parachute or I, 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 I crashed my car and yeah. A huge of amount of lead on my back. No. Yes. So none of that, just leaning forward for a long periods of time through your work. Yeah. Yeah, so for, for several minutes. Okay. So what um, sort of treatment did you try first of all, and how long did this go on for before you began to make the connection with emotions? Uh, I... I I, I tried physical therapy with uh, special exercises, mm -hmm. plus some medication uh, in terms of paracetamol, of painkillers. I didn't actually move into inflammatory drugs because um, I had some understanding from uh, people around that 
they might help in the beginning, but it's not the solution. That was uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, for other cases. I, I had already information. I tried physical therapy, heating pads, uh, some chiropractic uh, treatments. I would say that mostly mobility, like these Mackenzie exercises, uh, stretches, and a little uh, strengthening of the core muscles and the leg muscles, this would be much more helpful than the drugs. Right. Or laying in bed. Because for a large period of time, I had to lay several hours in bed. Right. So how was that affecting your daily life? Uh, my activities had decreased to 80% for at least nine months. Right. Okay. At about a year, I, gained, I regained an 80% of previous activities. Good, good. And was it affecting your work? As but well? then come and go. Uh, yes, yeah. okay, yes. So it was still coming and going. So you then developed knee pain, didn't you? I developed the knee pain mm -hmm. exactly year ago when we started talking. I had some when we started uh, treating your pro through your problem. Uh, I had uh, some slight incidents in the previous years. Uh -huh. For a couple of days, I would have some pain uh, around the tendons of the patella, of uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, after uh, squats. Right, okay. Uh, but okay. this would come and go easily. Um, say, for, I, it occurred only a couple of times for two or three days okay. without any treatment. But you had but a, resistant pain. Right. Yes. But you had a diagnosis of chondromalacia patelli and you were told you had a, um, a meniscus tear, a tear of your cartilage. Exactly. This was uh, by the time, a, a, days, a couple of days before our treatment. I had, I had a month's period of uh, both, not exactly back pain, mostly knee pain. But I was thinking all the time, now how can I stretch the back like that with bending also in the meantime my knees because this uh, position also for the knees hurts. Yes. So I had to do that and the back would start triggering also some pain. Right. But now I'm doing that, <laughs> it doesn't trigger anything at all. And also I do that with my knees. Yes, at that time I had persistent pain um, for a month. Um, in inflammation with uh, the joint, uh, how you call this, the liquid. Uh, you know. Inflammation, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I was uh, insisted to take an MRI by some doctor and uh, this, there was a minor meniscal, a yeah. grade one to two, a degenerative state. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was attributed to that. And I had also to stay in bed for long with the knees uh, mm. uh, flex and do some exercises and take inflammation and things like that. But I started your trip. Right. And the month after that, okay. I started back. Excellent. And climbing. So how did you come across our work? I had a couple of months ago when I started realizing after um, an incident with my back, uh, I came across the work of uh, John Sarno mm -hmm. and his team. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, I realized several factors that would affect also my personality and my symptoms. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I, I looked at the TMS wikis and forums. Mm -hmm. I came across some recommendations about your uh, institution. Okay. And uh, I was really honored to contact you and start Lovely. this program. So we, so we did this program with you and Greece. Yeah, and we did it with you in Greece and me in England. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> and you finished about yes. a year ago. Okay, so tell me a little bit about um, how you, the, what you learned most on the program or what you found maybe most beneficial while working through all this and resolving your back pain and your knee pain. 
Um, everything, ugly. Everything. All, all, uh, <laughs> all tactics or methodologies were beneficial. Uh, I would say that the main principle of uh, spending some time, some minutes, seven minutes, a couple of times per day uh, for relaxation, mm -hmm. uh, positive mm -hmm. affirmations, journaling, and uh, treating the moment of the symptom or the moment of either the physical or the emotional symptom uh, with uh, switching statements, with rationalizing your condition, mm -hmm. all this package is really beneficial throughout our uh, treatment. Yes. Because on one hand, I had to train, uh, to train my mind through journaling mm -hmm. in order to put things straight in the right order and uh, to clear up all issues that uh, were taking place in my mind. Mm -hmm. They were not linear mm -hmm. conditions. They were not linear conditions, highly complex conditions. Uh, I learned how to not uh, load myself with all those. I learned to let things go, flow. I learned how to emotionally manage those. I became a little more um, stick emotionally some way, but also at times that they could uh, be become very sad about patient, I would try to rationalize that in, all, in order not to overburden myself. Um, okay, so you mentioned when you mentioned when uh, you filled in your forms that you became a workaholic when you were 23? Yeah, I want to say that I, I, after my 23 years and until my uh, symptoms, uh, I was urged, I urged myself to work hard, to set aside nurturing myself, to set aside my needs yes. and to, to rush yeah. towards my my patients, my social status, my yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. prestige. Okay, so push you know. yourself uh, and to be, yes. to be, you say you became a workaholic, yeah? So when, when, you, uh, when did that start changing? With your treatment. <laughs> okay, okay. So then you started learning to focus on your needs so that then you were more able to deal with everything else in your life, yeah? So that's why exactly. it was so important that you said that, because I work with a lot of people where this is the case, and this is why it was so good for you when you mentioned that you uh, took, a, you started taking time in the day to relax and just have time to let go and be still or just, just be you rather than, striving and pushing forward. Um, over the past year, I know that you've continued with this awareness. It's like a personal development program, isn't it? And you've continued with this awareness and Absolutely. using some of the strategies. What are the things that you find most helpful in your life now to help you deal with any stressful times? Okay. At first place, and during the treatment and a couple of months after our treatment, this is an interval of four months, I kept almost every day or every second day sometimes uh, journaling, spending a couple of minutes per day, 15 to 30 minutes, in uh, expressing recent incidents that um, could, be proved to, could prove to be stressful. Okay. Um, this is this this is a great uh, methodology in order to to retrain your mind via um, the structure that I was given by you uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, in order to actually react in a similar way in a more rational way when uh, um, sad stressful situations uh, come back come. Uh, 
So um, okay. th this was uh, an important part I spent. Of course, after that, I didn't uh, spend a lot of time uh, practicing journaling. I moved to a more um, rapid level of facing daily problems. I kind of, this is uh, the outcome of the overall, uh, of the overall teachings of you and uh, Sarno. I became more exposed when something that would bother me. Uh, so you became more... I, I, I would express myself more easily. I would express my anger, I would express my disagreements, I wouldn't leave it for tomorrow, I would do it right on time. Great, great. One hand. On the other hand, when I couldn't have this time, mm -hmm. and uh, I couldn't have mm -hmm. the opportunity uh, to do this face-to-face, -face, I could uh, use switching statements when I would feel that something going on inside me and also it has some physical symptoms in the mm -hmm. crucial territories of my body, I would use the switching statements in order to rationalize myself and go on. And this would work like rapidly. Right, right. But it, 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 it had all this training, absolutely. Good. And you were, you were telling me earlier that you would rationalize and put things into perspective but you would also journal when you felt you needed to. Yes. Yeah? Right. And what about meditation um, and silence, just time to be still? Do you still inc incorporate that into your life? Yes. Um, I haven't practiced that at all six, six months now. I just do take some breathing, some slow breathing uh, exercises before sleeping at night or something like that. Okay. I didn't have the need in the last six months. Okay. I was symptom free. I was, uh, um, my mind was, was far more clear than last year. Mm -hmm. I could face situations. Uh, Good. On time. Okay. Um, but for, for, for six months, I did practice that as well. Right. So even though you're not meditating now, um, from what you're saying, you are looking after yourself better. So you are taking time out for you to nurture yourself and to have some balance in your life. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And you live in Greece. You can go and sit on a beach and look at the sun. <laughs> or the sea. <laughs> well, the charter flights to the ants can provide that. <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> so it sounds like you have become a lot better at setting boundaries, learning to say no, um, and express how you feel. And you're using things like journaling and rationalizing your thoughts and also recognizing how you're feeling by being more emotionally aware which was not the case at the beginning, yeah? So Exactly. Yeah, so as well as that, from the sounds of it, although you're not regularly meditating, you're finding time to have some quiet times in your life. Is that right? Yes, daily, daily. Daily. Even, even moving in the traffic, sometimes either I get and become relieved, and after that, I start rationalizing, and it's it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a part of meditation. It's not like the meditation uh, when uh, taking a comfortable position and breathing, but mm -hmm. it's a sort of meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also an actual meditation, yeah. changing scenery uh, yeah. uh, from uh, one institution to another for uh, my business. Uh, this mobility also helps me a lot because I have some time to stand still somewhere, have coffee and think, rethink the problem, rethink myself, rethink my needs, program more rationally the day after. 
Yes, I, I, I am sort of lucky uh, in terms of my schedule. So, yes, we can't speak. I am meditating every day and uh, I am rethinking problems every day uh, in terms of my, my self's perspectives, right. my self's needs. And yet, um, when you're thinking, rethinking, presumably now you're doing it in a way that's not creating stress and worrying about it and analyzing about things because as you were finding before that that did cause you a lot of stress. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if, um, if you had one thing you wanted to say to people watching this who are starting their journey, what would you say? Um, I'd say many things. Okay. Um, you quickly. <laughs> I I say to uh, to understand to understand the message, the main message. Yeah. And to be patient in the yeah. beginning in order to realize it, because when you are. Um, uh, your functionality is far different, is far more influenced by stressful daily events. Uh, and you don't have time to realize who you are, what you are doing at the moment, what are your needs. Uh, taking the, the step further be difficult in the beginning. My personal uh, experience from your program uh, was that uh, our, our uh, treatment lasted for two months around. Three months. <clears throat> Three months, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the first month was kind of difficult. I had this, this, this battle inside of me. Yes. I had this yes. battle. From the second month and on, and on I saw gradual daily improvement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third month, I... I could say I, I, I could say that I, I took my life back. Mm. Yes. yes. Without exaggerating. I was suspicious before starting our uh, program with Sarno's work. Mm -hmm. But to take your program and I am grateful for all my for all of my life. Wonderful. Wonderful. To you. Thank you, thank you. And, and the lovely thing is, it is about your life, isn't it? It's personal development. It's understanding yourself better, yes. which will help move yes. you forwards. That's it. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Stefanos. I'm really so thankful that you took the time out today to be able to talk to people, for, because you know what it was like. You really, it's so helpful to hear from other people, to relate to other people. So thank you. Thank you, Georgie.